The Simple Sophisticate is sponsored by Heat Holders. As we are in the middle of winter, the best way to keep yourself warm is, in two words, heat holders. Heat holders makes the warmest thermal socks around. They keep your feet warmer than just ordinary socks in the coldest conditions. How do they do it? Heat holders uses a three-stage process with a cashmere-like advanced insulating yarn that's soft to the touch and brushed on the inside and traps warm air closer to your skin, keeping your feet warmer, comfortable, and dry. And what Heat Holders says it makes is the softest and most comfortable socks is guaranteed. And they also make hats, gloves, scarves, throws, and much more. I've been enjoying wearing their socks as I head up to the mountain to go snowshoeing or cross-country skiing. And they do indeed keep my feet very, very warm. As a listener of the Simple Sophisticate podcast, go to heatholders.com and enter the promo code SIMPLE to save 15% off your order. Receive free shipping with any purchase of $25 or more. So don't freeze your feet off this winter. Remember to go to heatholders.com and use the code SIMPLE. That's heatholders.com, making life warmer. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and readers' favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 321st episode of The Simple Sophisticate. We're making our way through this first month of January. We're halfway through it. And so today's topic is going to basically address what you might be feeling if you were someone who set some goals, resolutions, even just a simple abstract intention and how to actually carry that forward into an entire year, let alone a full life. Because this jarring back and forth from ending the year feeling one way and wanting to feel a different way the next year can kind of get, well, this is why a lot of people don't set resolutions. They get tired of that back and forth. They get tired of the exhaustion and then the disappointment or whatever those feelings might be that really yin and yang from one side to the other, extreme wise. So we're going to talk about some ideas for really settling in to a great new year. And really, you can do this any time of the year. So if you're not listening um, in January to this episode, say you listen in June or, you know, in August, wherever, whenever, you can do this at any time. But before we get to that, we have two petite plaisirs this week. I'm making this a habit. I'm not trying to, but there's two things I just want to share with you. And one is a very simple, very, well, they're both very inexpensive, but one has to do with great skincare. And the other has to do with an amazing shower experience, as well as bringing in a touch of France and well, skincare as well. So we'll get to that at the end of today's episode. But what are we talking about for today's topic? This particular episode was inspired where I find myself at the moment. And so I've titled the the post or the episode, nine tips for resetting your daily rhythm to harmonize with your life's desired composition. In other words, how to get back into your groove. And that's where I find myself getting back into my daily and weekly groove. December has the ability to take us out of our daily and weekly rhythms. With all the joviality and celebration, we often excitedly step into the change and welcome the shift of energy and focus during this time of year. And sometimes we don't really want to, but we carried into it, 
or sometimes we feel we're obligated. So we, we step into it anyway, but it really drains us. There's all sorts of different feelings we each feel. And it changes per person too, depending where we are in our life journey. But similarly, when we have chosen a temporary project to focus our attention, we know it's not going to last forever, um, but it shifts our routine and it shifts where we place our energies, how we prioritize our days and how we go about, you know, everything when it comes to our attention and our time and our money, if we're doing an investing, uh, if we're investing in a project. Now, granted, these are voluntary changes, but we also know they're not going to be forever and we wouldn't want them to be forever, but we want the change that that project will bring. Could be renovation, could be going to school and getting a degree to so that you can have a different job. It could be, you know, you're, you're going on a sabbatical. It's so many things that just, they're temporary when you step into them, you know it, but it also causes you to really shift gears from a life that you may have really loved, but you wanted to change something ever so slightly or knew you needed to do something differently, but it's going to require a lot more energy. However, what we realize is when the holidays are around us or a project is taking place is that the routine that we did have in place pre December and these projects, if we intentionally cultivated it, as I know many and most of you have, if you've been a listener for a long time of this podcast, that routine was helpful for a reason. We, we, we did it consciously. We knew what worked for us and to be fair, you know, we might've taken it for granted how powerful it was to our peace of mind and our steadiness and our, our calm. As I shared in episode 316, we talked about how to bring vitality into your life. Our lives need white space is what the author called that. So these are those buffers where you're not scheduling every minute of the day, moments to breathe, to be, to just, ah. we think, we settle, we find the ground under our feet and we really sink in and we remind ourselves of the balance that we need to have before we move forward well into whatever else is in front of us throughout the rest of the day. To look at it another way, why is beautiful music so beautiful? Well, Claude Debussy says music is the space between the notes. In other words, you in other words, you need that white space. You need the space between the notes to make it harmonize, to elevate the quality. When our lives become too full, too jammed with demands, even if they lead us to supposed exciting results, our being suffer, our peace of mind suffers, and we ultimately end up exhausted, gasping for space to catch our breath, unable to connect well or fully in a way that would actually foster the life we love living. As I mentioned, today's episode is inspired by my own life at the moment. This week ahead, so this week starting this Monday moving forward, is actually the first week that I will step back into the weekly and daily routines that I have long wanted to be part of my day. Being in my house entirely on my own, without contractors. And I have one job to focus on for the first time in my life and five days in front of me to reset. And so I sat down this weekend and I told myself, okay, how do you reset? You know the routines that you wanted to do and you've done them temporarily from time to time on holidays, you know, during summer break, you know, off and on during the pandemic, but not fully and entirely because you just couldn't because there's so many unknown shifts that would always come our way. But I really couldn't, I didn't really realize that this was the first week that in my entire life that I've never had a second job or was tending to a big, big project as well as working. And so how do we do that well? How do we do that well? Resetting does not necessarily mean returning to what was. And I think that's very important, even though we are saying the word resetting, re meaning again, you're not reverting back entirely. You might go back and include some aspects, and that's what we'll talk about today. After all, the project has concluded that you, you know, you brought into your life to bring, you know, something better, something different. And so that's going to cause your routine to be different. And if you are resetting after the holidays, you no doubt experienced either connections, conversations, or moments that deepened or awoken or informed you about something unknown prior to this month, this past month of December. You now have the opportunity to apply what you are aware of more so 
and enhance your way of dancing with your days and your weeks. So how do we reset constructively? I have nine ideas and I've put them in for the most part in order to kind of go through because I think it's a bit of a, a progressive journey. And the first one is let the rest and recovery happen. So in other words, you're not going to do anything. You are just going to let your being (laughs) receive what it needs. Your body is likely more tired than you realize. And I say body, I also mean your mind, your mind and your emotions and everything's probably more exhausted than you realize as you have been traveling at a different pace and your body has been carried by the adrenaline pushing you through, making it, making it possible for you to go through what you're doing. Even if you're loving what you're doing, there's adrenaline there. But this is not sustainable for clear thinking or engaging. Often, you know you need to give yourself excessive rest when you fall asleep far earlier than you ever would. Hello, 7 p.m. on the sofa, completely zonked out. A couple of times, if I'm being very conservative in my, in my number counting. One of them just happened a couple of days ago, so I was just out. Woke up at 8.30 and the, this British show was going on. I'm like, I totally missed what the plot was. Shannon, go to bed. <laughs> That's a hint that your body is asking for a bit more rest than it normally needs. Your body is trying to speak to you. This is not a bad habit because it's not a habit. It is a need. And when the body is fully rested, you will be able to return to your regular seven to nine hours of regular sleep. You'll be able to turn in at your usual time. Maybe it's eight, maybe it's nine. I know I go to bed fairly early. Maybe it's 10 or 11, whatever it is. You'll get back into that routine. And you'll begin to wake up when you need to wake up. But in the meantime, honor what your body and your mind is asking for. So that's number one. Let the rest and recovery happen. Number two, reflect on your previous routine, pre-project or pre-holidays. What I have done and what I actually did over the weekend is pull out old journals because I do keep routines that are working or that I wanted to create. And I refer to them often just to remind myself, oh, I do want that little detail in here. Oh, that's right. I enjoy doing this in the morning. That really sets a great tone. Or I really need to make sure that I remove this tech from my bedroom because I slept so much better when I did that. Often we do remember the general routines, the general aspects that you know need to be there have breakfast well yeah we know we need to have breakfast but it's the little things it's the little things it's you know that certain radio station that you listen to or you know making sure in the spring you open the windows so the birds can wake you up or a particular candle or hand lotion that just soothed you before you went to bed having a glass of water and I'm talking about sleep here because that's how we start and end our days. But there's so many other things throughout your day that, you know, just bring you steadiness. So reflect on those. And maybe you too have a journal or something you've written down. You can look at that. But even if it's just a mental examination or reflection, do that. Let this practice of of reflecting remind you what you missed, but also remind you of what was a headache. And you're glad you don't have to bring that into your routine. You didn't miss it at all. So make sure you don't bring those things back. I will say one thing that I did bring back and it was out of more comfort. Um, and I think I just was a little bit restless because I was still grieving or I was stressed about some things that were going on and I didn't know how to process them yet. I brought the iPad back into my bedroom and I was checking my emails in the morning, which I had not been doing for a very long time prior to when my baby Oscar died. And I, and that's my pup for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time who had a very long, lovely life. But still prior to that, I had him in my life. I was doing well. I didn't need that comfort of checking when my mind, because I couldn't control my mind after all that happened. I couldn't control my mind. So I went and grabbed my iPad and checked my emails. And I knew it, I knew it consciously. It wasn't the best thing to do. But now I've got the iPad back out of the room because I know that wasn't a good habit. And my daily routine in that morning stage is is going a lot better. But then, so you've brought back what you loved. You've left behind what you didn't like. But then... Number three, decompress. Now is the time to just put down on paper in a journal or talk with a counselor what you are relieved about. So like what's over that you're like, phew, made it through that. Anxious about, hopeful about, excited about, nervous about. 
either write that down or talk to someone who's objective. Often we think by thinking about, so just holding all these ideas in our head, each of these items actually should be expressed verbally or written down. Because when we do that, it helps us to see more clearly what it is we're actually feeling or saying. What do we actually mean? We see it on paper. We have someone hear it and they can uh, mirror that back to us in their words. Say, this is what I hear you saying. You can go, oh, I'm not actually, I don't actually mean that. This helps us ascertain where we are being constructive in our thinking. I think that's what's most important here. And where we are still stuck in the stress or the jazzed up adrenaline fueled energy that is unsustainable caused by the project or holiday season. That's now over, but we haven't gotten off that ride yet in an emotional way. And we need to because it's unhealthy. And our either our counselor or our journal, when we do that, it helps us to see, oh, I'm still thinking in a way that's not constructive. So before we make any changes, additions, or deletions, we want to make sure our mind is grounded and our clarity of what we want our daily and weekly routine to foster is understood without confusion by the previous temporary shifting of how we were going about our lives. So number three is just really, it's, it's more about grounding ourselves before we make any big decisions on how we're going to reset what that's going to look like. Number four is don't do anything drastic. This is January, at least in America, often January turns into the month of extreme restriction dry January or excessive working out. And then we burn out from excessive working out and we regress, essentially reverting to extremes that are never intended to be a regular rhythm in our lives, keeps us in a state of instability. No wonder we get out of rhythm easily and have difficulty shifting to a helpful pace when we swing from one extreme to the next. This is what exhausts us. This is why people stop actually making resolutions and and putting something down on paper, whatever it might be. It's because the extreme way of approaching it doesn't work consistently or effectively. However, on the flip side, when we have a steady grounding daily and weekly routine, we can savor those extras. That glass of wine with dinner, but it's just one glass of wine. You're not restricting yourself You need to have those moments. That's what living simply luxuriously is about. It's an everyday, all year round experience. You can savor those beautiful surprises, those moments that exceed our imaginations whenever they arise, whether in January, December, or anywhere in between for whatever reason. So refrain from doing anything drastic. It actually could hurt rather than help you arrive at where you want to go. Now I have five more ways to reset. But those four are really more processing than taking action. So I'm going to let you process those. And I'll meet you back here on the other side after about four minutes to introduce you to the sponsors of today's episode. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Is there something preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, connecting a safe and private online environment that's also convenient. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. With licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, LGBTQ matters, family conflicts, self-esteem, trauma, sleep, you're sure to find what you need. Everything you share is confidential. And it's time for you to start living a happier life today. As a listener of the Simple Sophisticate podcast, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting the sponsor of our show today, betterhelp.com slash simple. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash simple. Bomba's mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bombas, you are also giving to someone in need. Bombas designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Everything they make is soft, seamless, tagless, and has a luxurious, cozy feel. They're made with super soft materials like merino wool, pima cotton, and even cashmere, which makes them the perfect cozy winter layers. There's a pair of Bomba socks for everything you do. They come in tons of options like comfy performance styles for every sport and activity that keeps you moving. 
And Bombas is something that I wear every day. When I'm just taking my everyday walks with Norman, walking around the house, I want my feet to stay a little bit warmer. As a simple Sophisticate listener, go to bombas.com slash Sophisticate and get 20% off any purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Sophisticate for 20% off. Bombas.com slash Sophisticate. If you have been experiencing or becoming more self-conscious about your hair, maybe it's loss of volume or shedding or thinning hair, Vegemore is a transformative 100% vegan product that takes a clean, holistic approach to your hair health that leverages smart botanicals clinically proven to promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer looking hair. Vegemore's GRO Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit and GRO Serum work together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. It's easy to use. Just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with the conditioner. For prime results, follow up your wash routine with a daily drop full of the serum. Apply to your scalp, rub it in, and done. It's that fast, just that easy. Vegemore products are an essential part of your daily hair care routine. And as someone who appreciates volume because I have very fine hair, I really appreciated the combination of their shampoo and conditioner plus the serum. All Vegemore products are 100% vegan and cruelty-free and never contain parabens or hormones. And best of all, Vegemore has a 90-day money-back guarantee, so give it a try. 91% of customers said they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegemore in just three months of use. As a simple, sophisticated listener, start your journey to longer, fuller-looking hair. Go to Vegemore.com slash sophisticate and use promo code sophisticate to save 20% off your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash sophisticate. And use the promo code SOPHISTICATE to save 20% at vegemore.com slash SOPHISTICATE. Fun Jet Vacations is a one-stop shop for all of your vacation needs, including flights, hotels, transfers, and excursions. As experts in the industry, Fun Jet Vacations offers customers a fast, easy, and fun way to book their next vacation to one of the more than 100 destinations like the Caribbean, Mexico, Hawaii, Las Vegas, and Florida. They offer exclusive all-inclusive package deals to Mexico and the Caribbean, as they believe that travel is not just a ticket to a destination, it's a getaway to an experience with the people that matter most. They know that travel can have a significant impact on your life, not just when you're on vacation, but by bringing home those lighthearted experiences and filling your day-to-day with a deeper sense of well-being, joy, and downright fun. A fun jet vacation creates lasting memories of nonstop excitement. As a listener of the Simple Sophisticate podcast, for a limited time, you can use promo code FJ50 for $50 off your next fun jet vacation. Get more moments that are fun expected. Surprise yourself with where you could go at funjet.com or call your local travel advisor. Remember, use the promo code FJ50. Restrictions apply. Welcome back. Number five on the list for how to reset your daily rhythm to harmonize with your life's desired composition. In other words, how to get your groove back for just living every day's well is simply strengthening the foundation for you, the food, the exercise, and the mental massage. This is a tripod of health that we have talked long about here on the podcast and the blog when we talk about health and fitness um, topics. In fact, I did more of those posts early, early on in the in the blog. So way back in 2010, 2011, 12, 13, you can look at the archives for those posts in the health section. But you want to make sure your three pillars of good health are tended to, and you want to bring them back into your rhythm for your daily and weekly routine. So that one of those legs of that tripod is what you eat. Second one is your consistent physical exercise routine, making sure you include aerobic and strength exercises. And the third one is regular exercising of your mind or strengthening of your mind. Now let's go through my case on each of those three items. My weekly grocery shopping routine became quite irregular these past eight months. And um, I usually would shop on Mondays and, um, and previously or prior to that with school, it was on Sundays. But now I really like going on Mondays um, because I can use the weekend to go through my cookbooks, kind of plan ahead what the week schedule is and see, you know, what meals I'll want and what meals um, I'll need to have and food in the, in the fridge pr- to prepare them. And often, you know, the markets are restocked on Monday afternoons. There's fewer people and, uh, 
Then I come home and I know I have a full week of delicious meals ready to be prepared. Thankfully, the second pillar of my exercise routine was actually the one leg that never got um, basically taken out. I was pretty consistent as I find my exercise routine to be vital to my self-care. Um, it kept me steady throughout all the changes that would happen from week to week. Um, in fact, the one thing that the contractors could depend on was that they knew if I wasn't in the house in the morning, depending on when they would arrive, that I was out walking with Norman and I would be back to answer questions. But every morning I would have gone out and walked or gone somewhere to exercise. My meditation um, on the third leg of this tripod was right in the middle of these two others. So it was inconsistently consistent. <laughs> But it was something that every time I did it, I noticed that the day was better. I was more grounded. I was a little bit calmer, a little more clarity. And I saw that nearly immediately. And so, you know, a day would get away from me and I'm like, oh, get back on that horse, Shannon. You can do this. You know that it's beneficial. And uh, the more consistent I was, the more clear I was in my decision making. So those are the three components to figure out how to get back into your routine, um, to really get back into your groove. And I've included a post that um, was episode 242, so a couple years ago, sharing 31 ways to practice true self-care. If you want to check that out to get some ideas on how to bring regular self-care back into your life. So that's number five. Tend to strengthening your foundation, the food, the exercise, and the mental massage. Make it regular, all three. Number six, find space and time for your social connections. This is where you need to begin to look outside of your work schedule. If the project that you were all consumed by was work related, okay, you want to start connecting again or better with people and events that you simply just enjoy being in their company or enjoy engaging in that particular activity that you just didn't have as much time for. And hopefully or truthfully, we should not extricate this time with either the people or these events, as it reveals that we maybe took them a little bit too for granted. And we need to spend time and energy to acknowledge that, that maybe we made a mistake by prioritizing something too much. Um, because when we take a step back like this, we realize we need to reset. We realize, okay, was it worth prioritizing this over that? And sometimes it might have been. Um, but our social connections are so important and so vital to our well-being. Um, and just remembering, remind ourselves to prioritize those regardless of the shifts that might happen in our work schedule, the holiday schedule that comes around, so on and so forth. So from carving out time to, you know, just simply go out and be amongst your community. So maybe you're going to the local bookstore no particular purchase is in mind. You just want to go peruse and hang out, meeting with friends for drink or taking, you know, uh, taking in a local theater production, taking a day trip with a loved one somewhere that catches the curiosity for you both. Just simply making time and sharing time together, prioritizing that, getting back into that groove. If that's something that was lacking during the time of the project or the holidays. So that's number six. Number seven is to find your financial footing. So, you know, after the holidays, our budgets can take a hit. Um, and after a project we've, we've invested, the same may also be the case with our finances. It may seem initially that the best idea is to go to extremes and just really starve yourself down to, you know, very little, if any, uh, you know, spending, things like that. But often this is counterintuitive and similar. This is similar to drastic dieting. This is that excessive December. Um, this is that excessive January that we were talking about earlier in number four. It often sounds good in theory because we think it's going to make things happen quicker and reach our goal faster. But it actually deters the, the 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 positive progress from actually materializing because we we can't hold to it. It's too extreme. The best idea is to set a plan for, yes, the reduction of spending, but also for paying off what needs your financial attention. Take the long-term intentional approach to slow your speed and find a rhythm with money that will last not just through January, but ensure that you don't ratchet up the excessive spending or investment again next December or next time your, idea, your mind dances with an idea for a project, especially with the second one there. By steadily moving forward instead of making drastic decisions, 
This will remind you to savor and appreciate what you took that time and what you used that money for to invest in so that you don't jump into the next project because you need to savor what you've done and ask yourself, why do I feel I have to be so busy in a project? What is that need that doesn't feel fulfilled? What's lacking? Because often what's lacking doesn't have a price tag on it. It's often deepening our relationships. It's often better understanding ourselves. Things that take time. Things that can be scary, but to have a priceless outcome. So let's try not to keep our minds so busy and instead be more present and open to opportunities. So if you want to do a hard but not excessive reset, here's an idea when it comes to money. Simply take one full week off in January from spending anything. And I've written about this and talked about this before. And I've linked to the post that shares eight ways to make that possible for one week. And some people do this every single month of the year. Um, This will give you time to at least assess, find your footing, and clarify any decisions you want to make moving forward. So just really let you stop, catch a breath, and not get into or continue making um, spending habits or decisions that you've just been doing for so long because the project was so long or the holidays just were so demanding, whatever it might be. This gives you time to really get your footing back. So that's number seven, finding your financial footing. Number eight, Begin to think less about the future and more about today. Initially, this item on the list may seem counterintuitive, but likely as the year began, you already set your resolutions or your revolutions, as I like to call them, or at least an intention for the year. I have included a post um, on the show notes that shares a whole list of ideas for creating a fresh start for the new year. You know, so if if you did set those resolutions or the goals, good, that's good, keep those. But once you have approximately three, but no more than five outcomes you would like to see materialize this year, first clarify the behavior and activities and small steps you need to tend to in your every days to make them happen. Write them down, get them clear in your mind. And again, you're breaking them down into small steps so you know what you need to do in your every days, every week, every month, whatever it might be. Then let go of thinking about the future and that outcome. Let it go. Stop thinking about it and focus how you're going to move through your days. You have the ingredients for what the days need to get you there. Trust that. If your intention, for example, is to learn specific skills on becoming a better master of your mind or a better communicator or be more loving, I shared a list last week on the blog of 15 books that you might want to explore for a better, happier, more contented you. Now that list is there, but instead of seeing this as a huge task to conquer, just go find one of those books, purchase it, check it out at the library and move through it at your own time as it, as whatever time you need to absorb it and really understand it without even thinking about it. You will finish when you're ready and you'll move on to the next if you want to. You know where to look when you're ready for the next book. That list is right there or whatever the resource is that you're using. But for now, focus on what you're doing right now. Same thing with regards to a job, with how you're holding yourself in the world. Just focus on what you can do today. What's the next best move? What's the next best move? Just focus on that. In other words, when you were immersed in the project, you were likely thinking about the outcome more than you wanted to, even though, you know, you're supposed to enjoy the journey, and you probably did, okay? But let's just be honest, you're trying to get to the end goal, you want that project done, you're excited about the outcome. So you're thinking about the future, and it pulled you away from your everyday focus, savoring the life you have the good fortune to live, investing well in certain relationships, because you were all in on that project. However, that needs to change now. And the change needs to bring you, me, back into the present. Trusting you've put into place the small tasks that are needed to be tended to that will lead you to where you want to arrive. Let go. Be open to the beauty of the everyday. Hold yourself in the present. So that's number eight. Think less about the future and more about today. And last but not least on this list, number nine is now let go. This is something we talked about as a community in our monthly chat in January with top tier members. And I loved hearing how everyone was doing this, how it was, you know, difficult for some and why, 
how other people conquered this and moved forward through this and learned that this really was beneficial. And that's what I love about our conversations each month. It's not just me talking. Everyone else is talking and sharing their journeys as well. And so you're getting a lot of different inspiration and ideas. And you're not alone. Everyone's on a different place in their journey. So with regards to letting go, when you are so hyper-focused on one aspect of your life, the holidays or that project that we hope will change our lives for the better, we have planned, we have looked ahead, and we are then often so laser focused that we often forget to just be, to just let go, to fully see what is presented by the people we happen to meet, the events as they happen to occur, the weather that dances around the days we try to structure so rigidly. Let go. Immerse yourself in the life you love living, savoring the simple pleasures along the way, listening well, and sharing yourself fully. And see what happens. Your life is going to start to change for the better because you're living it. You're not putting yourself in the future, which pulls you away from the present. January need not be the extreme month of deprivation or punishment it often becomes, but rather a month to reset, to take a deep cleansing breath and settle into a rhythm that elevates our every days, setting precedent for how we will move through the entire year that awaits our travel forward. And you can look at the entire list of links that I've provided um, on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 321, <laughs> episode 321. And I'll be back with this week's two petite plaisirs. All right. So this week I do have two petite plaisirs for you. And this first one is for something we don't want to happen with our skin, but it is a lovely, simple, and inexpensive solution. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Mighty Patch. And some of you may already know about this, but if you don't, I would like to share it with you because I was so grateful when someone shared it with me. So, you know, stress happens, PMS happens, life happens, perimenopause happens. Oh my gosh, those moments are fun. Going back to your adolescent. Um, thus, yep, you guessed it. The random blemish will pop up and often on those unwanted days, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thankfully, there is the Mighty Patch. And there are a lot of different brands that make what they call basically um, the blemish, blemish Patch or Pimple Patch to make it more crude. But I like the Blemish Patch. But the original one is from the company Hero Cosmetics. And I actually was recommended this because I go to my esthetician a couple um, every other month, um, sometimes once a month, depending on what's going on with my skin. And I've been going to her for three or four months, uh, excuse me, three or four years now. And I highly trust her with my skin. She's amazing. She recommended this simple fix. So if I have um, a blemish that pops up unexpectedly, these are just small little clear circular patches. You'll see a picture of, of it on the show notes. Um, just go to the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash PP321. Mighty Patch Skincare. And for fewer than 12 bucks, you have 36 patches. And you leave it on overnight and you don't even feel it. And you wake up and you take it off. And it does work. It either reduces it, depends on obviously what's going on, or it eliminates it. But you will see a reduction. I've used it a couple of times now and I have seen a positive um, result the next morning, which is always a happy day. You can order these online. I'll provide a link to them. Or you can pick them up at Target or any beauty shop with a wide selection of products. Um, but there are a lot of different brands out there. This one comes highly recommended from my esthetician. This comes from highly recommended reviews. I, mean, I think there's like 18,000 positive reviews on this one. But anyway, it's called the Mighty Patch. And just it's just good to have in your skincare emergency kit. Bring it on your travels, things like that. So that's the first petit plaisir. Now let's talk about lovely things. Let's talk about France. And Marseille. So on Friday, I shared a picture of my shower, a short little, a small little vignette picture of my uh, shower um, insert that had a cube soap bar from Marseille. And it is from Marseille. And I have a link to the shop that I shop on. And it was, it cost just under five euros. Very inexpensive. It costs more to ship than to buy them. And the shipping isn't that bad. And what are they? Why do I love them? Well, I started using um, these traditional 
Marseille soaps, and they are the cubed either 300 grams or 600 grams, and they're traditionally green, but now they're made of all different colors. The key to remember what makes a traditional Marseille soap is that it must be made of at least 72% olive oil, at least, and not have any animal products, artificial fragrances, no coloring, and no preservative, preservatives. That is key. And there's only four ingredients that can be used to make this. Vegetable oils, water, salt, and soda. That is it. That's why I shop at the shops. I shop at, there's a couple out there. There's more than a couple. There's a handful out there. I learned of this particular company from um, David Leibovitz. And there are others out there. So I will link to this company that I buy from that ships to the States. They are made of organic olive oil from Provence. And... Um, they come in all different shapes now. You can get them in rectangular shapes, oval shapes, um, and again, they don't have to be in green anymore. But I have been using them since my my first bathroom was done, which was this summer, so well, September. And I can go through one of those 300, so that's a 300 cube, uh, 300 gram soap. I can go through that in about three months, maybe four. Number one, it looks very pretty. Number two, it doesn't take up a lot of space, but you do not or will not have any dry skin using this. You can use it not just for showering, you can use it for laundry, you can use it for you know cleaning things, all sorts of things. I highly recommend it. Less expensive, high quality, gives me the results that I want, multi-purpose, and they just look beautiful. So I always have a few on hand. And um, again, these are the traditional Marseille soaps in the cube form. Make sure they are made of at least 72% olive oil. That's the key. That's that's where you're going to get your skin the softness that it wants. It's not super soft, but it's not going to dry you out. So anyway, I will link to the company that I visit. It's called Savonnerie de la Lichon, L-I-C-O-R-N-E. Yes, my French is not perfect, but I love the language and I'm trying to learn. Savon de Marseille, olive, is the one that I have in my bathroom that you can see. And speaking of my bathroom... I showed a video tour of the completed shower um, on this past Saturday, Saturday Ponderings for top tier members. If you want to check it out, um, the tour of the full bathroom, which is inspired by Parisian elegance with a touch of English country, will be given, the full tour will be given in March. I'm waiting on wallpaper right now. The wallpaper is half up. I ran out of wallpaper. I know. Of all the projects to run out of wallpaper, I didn't run out of wallpaper on the others. I ran on, I ran out on this one. That'll happen in March. But with that said, if you haven't stopped by the blog, the new blog design has been revealed. We still have a few little tweaks and stuff, but my goodness, it's such a big improvement for navigation, for readers, user-friendly, easy to go where you want to go and what you want to read. And you probably already saw this because you're listening to the show right now. There is a new art square for this show that was created by Sarah Locker, the illustrator for not only the podcast but all the new illustrations you'll see in the blog and all 14 illustrations you will see in the Simply Luxurious Life's new book, which comes out March 22nd. The book cover was revealed and it was done by Sarah and it has so many details that will be shared uh, as to why I chose those details in the book itself. The book is called The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment. And it is over 480 pages. The proofs are on their way. Just put those, uh, put an order in for those today. And I'm really excited about sharing this book with you. There's a trailer for the book on the blog. There's details about what the content is all about on the blog. I'll provide a link on the show notes. And um, if you want to become a top tier member, this might be a great time to explore that because there's going to be some extra gifts that, um, members receive, top tier members receive for a limited time. I will announce what those are during our cup of moments on February 1st. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to bring this book. Of all the books that I have written, so this is the third one, I'm especially looking forward to this one arriving in readers' homes for you to read. Part memoir, but also primarily part daily meditation to inspire you to live your one and only and unique, simply luxurious life. All right, so those are the two petite plaisirs, the Mighty Patch and the traditional Marseille soaps. I hope you've enjoyed this week's petite plaisirs, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated 
taste. And before I wrap up, I want to share a review from a super fan, as she calls herself. Amy P. gave a five-star review for the show as the new year kicked off. She wrote, I have listened to every one of Shannon's cozy and comforting podcast episodes. The petit plaisir at the end of the episode is one of my favorite parts. Your pure positivity in the most recent episode is exactly how I wanted to start my new year. Thank you for your inspiration. I do believe this year it can all come together. I do too, Amy. I feel it. I feel it as well. And I'm so excited for you. Thank you for taking the time to share that review. It really means a lot. And if you too are enjoying the show, either rate a review and share what you enjoy while you tune in for each episode. Wishing you a wonderful, fresh new week. Here we go. <laughs> Bonjour.